I mean, I've been I've been saying to you, you know, a few times to you guys over the last few days, you know, that Instagram quote that I think about all the time, and it's um, people at the bottom compete, and people at the top collaborate. Yeah. And I just really believe that, like, if you have information or if you figured it out and you have your system or whatever, like. There's no reason to hoard it. Yeah. And like, you know, you have your thing and, and you're just not going to tell anyone ever it's your formula. Like, no, because we have the power to like literally link together, network together, change the trajectory of the industry. Welcome, everyone. This is the Eden Podcast. We are here with Ryan Ashley. You may know her from many things, including Teen Mom. <laughs> 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 yes, Ink Master best tattooer in the world i think but anyway we're here with her we're gonna talk um hi i'm so excited to have you here thank you for coming thank you so much this is the first podcast i've done in like a really long time a couple years yeah we're honored yeah. You look beautiful. Thank you so majestic, much. Thank you so much. Of course. Uh, I, yeah, I'm so super stoked to be here, but um, we've been following you guys, like following your process of the studio and everything that Eden has, you know, developed into. And like, it's been crazy watching you guys. You're crushing on so many levels with such a good message, such a good environment. And so, yeah. It's been it's been really cool to come and see it. We're here to talk about you. <laughs> what do you want? To, what do you want to know <laughs> about it? You're amazing. You are Thank like you. I mean, you're just like a powerful entity in the tattoo world. Um, I would say, I think you're probably the most famous tattooer in the world, and a. Great. That sounds crazy. I yeah. hope other people have that reaction as well. That's I, I think sounds so. crazy. Yeah. No, not your reaction. My reaction, because in in my mind, even hearing that, I'm like, oh my god. There's a rolodex of tattooers that I think are so mind blowing. The a, a rolodex in my mind, like above me, that I could think of that should have that title or should, you know, give people that feeling. So it's crazy hearing that well no and it's it's all you and putting in the work from the very beginning um i i'm also curious because like the first time i saw you on ink master i was like the first time that i've seen you um killed your season obviously um i heard like maybe i i think you were kind of like getting big in the industry before that or already pretty big too and you've just been like climbing up because of your talent and what Thank you do you. for the industry and just like everything in general. Yeah. So like, how did it, I don't know. I'm kind of curious how it all started. I don't think I've ever really asked you. Um, so, uh, man, it's crazy thinking about my life before I tattooed. Cause I, I feel like it's such a big tattooing is such a big part of our lives as tattooers. And it's not just our job or what we do. Like you wake up in the morning thinking about, you know, a design you would like to do. You go to bed with your iPad next to you. You know, it's every minute of every day. It's a way of life, you know, be, being a, a tattooer. And um, so thinking about a time before I tattooed is really funny, actually, because uh, I feel like it was always inside of me to want to decorate the human body and to play with anatomy mm. and to, you know, just focus on how beautiful this thing is like look at this vessel we get to fucking be in you know for for this reality and why would you not want to celebrate it and um so before I tattooed I um actually went to FIT um right out of high school I went to FIT for um fashion and worked in the fashion world for like six years and I got this cool job where um I worked for this um private label company that designed for bigger brands. And so my job at that company was designing beadwork, lace work, fabric, appliques, textiles, all of that stuff. And so sometimes, you know, I'd go into work and spend eight hours, nine hours, you know, with tweezers and a pile of beads, like gluing little beads to make the design to send to the factory to, you know, Wow, that makes so much sense too for what you do yeah. today yeah. and your style. Totally. And so, yeah, transferring that into tattooing, um, it 
wasn't really hard. It was obvious. I just went from one medium to another medium, you know, instead of decorating um, for on top of the skin, you start decorating things for in the skin, but you use that same mm -hmm. aesthetic and that yeah. same organic movement and flow. Yeah. And yeah. Yeah. It, it was honestly the best thing I could have done um, was work in fashion before I tattooed because the classes we took, you know, even in college were pattern making, drafting. You're learning about mm -hmm. how the human body is constructed in terms of how to put it down on a flat piece of paper, you know, how yeah. to get things yeah. to fit. Yeah. Like what shapes you're trying to create. And it really allowed me to realize that with fashion and with tattooing, you can create illusions on the human body and trick the eye into seeing whatever you want it to see, you know? Yeah. So, um, Sorry, yeah. real quick. Would you mind pulling your mic a little bit closer to you? Like, you can bring the whole stand close. Yeah, there you go. Is that good? Yeah, much better. <laughs> Is this better? <laughs> um, yeah, that, that's it. Because we, we always talk about how, like, uh, like tattooing is different than fine art. Because it's like you're designing it for a body. So you're designing on this cylindrical thing. And it's different than putting it on an iPad. But I never thought about how it's probably the same thing in fashion. Because... I'm sure there's a drawing process where you're drawing it on something flat, but it's it's meant to go on somebody's body and curve and fit them. Yeah, and, and it, even like I have all of these ideas, like all of these ideas about going into the back into the fashion world, doing all these cool garments and these cool appliques and all of these things. But it's everything I want to do is not all of the way possible because it, it's so hard. You know, when when you design for a sleeve, right? There's a straight line right here, and this isn't just a tube. It's actually like flat on one side, curved on the other. So when you, you know, something that would help people, honestly, a little cool piece of advice, if you ever fucking feel like doing this, no one's going to do this, but you should uh, <laughs> take a garment apart one time, right? Like take, if I took this like sweater off and you actually cut the garment perfectly at the seams and you laid it down flat, mm -hmm. you see the shape that it actually is. And the shapes will surprise you, you know? And so, um, Wow. Yeah, it's it's there's all the kinds of crazy shit happening now, though. If you guys do you use on, on Procreate all the like 3D human bodies where you could. OK, this guy at my shop, Paul, Paul Lunetta, mm -hmm. blew my fucking mind the other day. OK, he on his phone has this app called Polyscan and he scanned in a 3D file of his client. OK, of his client, his client's. 3d body and then pulled this 3d poly scan basically because it's a um it's like a 3d file you can pull it into procreate and like draw on top of it so wow. you could design so someone's wild. tattoos on their actual fucking body based on this body scan you do on your iphone Wait, what's, what's it called fuck? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> what do you know the app poly scan was the okay, scanning app scan. and then i think okay. he brought it into procreate and it's at Got the it. early stages wow. obviously so it's it's you know, it's clumsy a little bit and it's a little chunky and you can tell that it's not like, you know, it's not like a, a perfect like 3D scanner and everything. Yeah. But it's the it's the fetal stages of this shit. Wow. Right. It's the very beginning stages of this technology because people, you know, in the future of tattooing, you can say like, hey, can you have somebody, you know, your your loved one, your boyfriend, whatever, do a scan of your body for me and send it over so I can start designing for your tattoo. Yeah, that's why you could send each other 3D scans of each other's bodies and then design directly perfectly to fit that person. Yes, it's wild. Yes. The, the next software that has to come out Oh, should I say it out loud in case someone makes millions of off, off of it? But anyway, we'll cut if the, it's a really good idea. We'll cut it out and we'll just no. You know what? Fuck it. Knowledge should be free. We're not going to do this shit. Someone in the world should do it, but re like reverse it then. And it's an app that takes you know, if you sketch on a three D body and procreate, it's an app that takes those designs and perfectly make stencils for you like in the shape and in the size and yeah. everything like that pattern so <sighs> they print out perfectly to yeah i'm not i'm not smart enough to do that so if anybody else wants to jump on that help do, yeah <laughs> <laughs> it would help me dude sometimes my stencils take like Sometimes they take over two hours I to get on. I can oh imagine. God. Yeah. Just yeah. Looking at your pieces. Yeah. And do you, do you freehand a lot? Because like you're, I always tell people too in seminars, like it is almost nearly impossible to draw on a flat piece of surface and then fit it on someone's body, especially everybody's different, mm -hmm. all of that. 
And yours specifically is tailored just to bodies. Mm -hmm. Do you so? And it's so intricate. Well, I have a trick for that actually. Um, Hive Caps always sends me this big barrier film, clear barrier film, and it's about this big, right? Mm -hmm. And so a lot of times people will put saran wrap over an area and trace the perfect area to get the movement and the flow and all that. I use this giant barrier film because it's sticky Mm -hmm. and you could stick it to the body and then cut pieces, make your own pattern for yourself on their exact body. And when you lay it flat, you have, you know, the shape and everything of it. Scan that Mm -hmm. and and you have your shape and your iPad, obviously, for your perfect, you know, fit. Yeah. Um, But I learned that after years of freehanding shit on because it never lined up correctly. Yeah. It never lined up correctly. Okay, and wait, I'm visual. So you have the saran wrap and you wrap somebody like, don't use, fully. Should I do it? Do you guys have, <sighs> do we have an example? Do you guys have large barrier yeah, film? We, I mean, we we're have, doing a demonstrate. We're doing a demonstration. <laughs> uh, saran wrap. That's oh, no, sar- or no, no, not film. saran wrap. Barrier not saran wrap. Film. Barrier That's, film. Do you have big barrier film or not? Is that like the purple or am I thinking crazy? Well, I'm going to ask black, Hive Caps like, if they'll you wrap send you. your machine. It's barrier film, like, you know, the little blue barrier film. Yeah. But it's clear and it's this big. We don't have that. Dude, I'll ask Hive Caps if they'll send you guys one to try because you got to try this trick. It'll blow your fucking mind. Okay. Yeah. But okay. basically, like, you can do basically, like, mm-hmm. you could lay it over the whole arm, like clear, transparent, mm-hmm. and then wherever it meets, right? Because this will be flat, but your arm is not a perfect cylinder. Your yeah. arm is totally shaped the bottom is going to be less you know diameter than than the top yeah so if you lay it flat you can perfectly fit it make a seam draw your lines and you have your angles and shapes perfectly laid out for you of what that shape actually is you know what i mean (sighs) yeah and so even if you want to roughly freehand with marker on the skin Uh put this barrier film over it you make your pattern you make your general shape and then you have your flat outline of you know Oh, my God. But the barrier film makes a huge difference because if you try to just put saran wrap over someone's arm, it's never going to fucking stay. It's going to get wrinkly yeah. and yeah. weird. Yeah, it's too flimsy. Yeah. This is like giant, clear. It's not as sticky as masking tape. It's barrier film, but it's giant, clear, you know, transparent Brilliant. shit that you can literally make whole patterns of of people's. Brilliant. I, dude, I have a stack this big at my shop of people's body parts. It'll be like jason's left leg <laughs> like you know and like all my all the chest pieces that i do i like hold them up and be like whose is this i'll <laughs> yeah, try to imagine yeah. like whose body is this for for all the tattooers that are watching that are new when i mean new in the industry i mean within the last six seven years who may not know back in the day we used to draw without ipads and we used to have like big tracing papers and do something kind of similar, right? Mm-hmm. But it was, it does not sound as efficient as this. No. And looking back, I'm so glad. Well, I guess it's bittersweet that tattooing is evolving. <sighs> I'm, I love that tattooing is evolving because I'm a tattooer and I love spending more time on my artwork. And so if things can make my job easier and more convenient so I could be a better artist, I appreciate that. Mm -hmm. But also it's nostalgic because it's like it's the same feeling as like going home to your hometown and you love going up over this hill because right when you get to the top of the hill, you see this beautiful farmland. And then, you know, one year you go home to see it and there's condos built. Sorry, this is a personal story. I was trying to make it seem third person, but it happens to me yeah yeah Yeah, yeah. and it's kind of the same thing with tattooing where like you're a nostalgic for a time that doesn't exist anymore you know because those times actually made you who you are and i'm so happy for new tattooers that are just coming into the industry with all of these technologies and all these crazy things i wonder if they're going to gain the humility that we had to gain because when you draw a fucking back piece and it takes you days and you make a stencil and it takes you half a fucking day to make your stencil and the stencil is just a little bit off that sucks that sucks dude that (laughs) sucks dude and you're not designing a you're not designing a back piece on an airplane when you're bringing tracing paper this big with you you know what i mean like it's right and i it took me a while too i think i was i was better and um the first couple years of, of when i was a tattooer i 
felt like apprentices, especially they, they needed to have it hard. Just like me, I, I was angry. I was upset still about the people who hurt me. And, and, um, there's a balance, you know, I don't think you need to be ab- abused by any means in your apprenticeship, but I feel like working really hard without being abused, I just yeah. like working your ass off does build the humil- humility because what we are able to do right now is so incredible and so important. And to f- see people that maybe aren't so grateful that they are able to do this, it hurts my soul. A little bit. I unfortunately have the same experience. I had a rougher mentorship like Mm. I had a pretty rough apprenticeship in terms of like psychological abuse Mm. you know I didn't know that's what it was at the time yeah because you have tunnel vision towards your goal and you're willing to take whatever people want to give you you know in terms of of treatment and everything and for me at least I was always like I'm strong enough to take it. I'm strong enough to take it. This is what life is going to be. This is a tough industry. I better tough it up now. And it is a tough industry and you do have to be fucking tough, but you don't have to be abused. No one has to be fucking abused and made to feel uncomfortable. That's fucked up, dude. Right. You know, and it's just because hurt people hurt people. When I, when I, when I see apprentices that, you know, I don't know, somebody is going and getting a coffee for them. And I'm like, no, you're apprentice. Like, I have those feelings as well, but it's because I was hurt and I and I feel like I went through it and you should go through it. It's a rite of passage, but that's not it's normal to feel that way. But I don't think it's the highest vibration feeling that you can have or should have. I don't think that's the goal is to feel that way. Do you have apprentices or have you ever had apprentices? So actually, absolutely not. I have no apprentices. (laughs) I am still figuring this shit out, so I cannot (laughs) be teaching other people. Um, But there is. um, Deanna, maybe you could take on Ryan as an apprentice. Yeah, I would love <laughs> if that. If you're still figuring shit out, I would we're love all that. fucked. <laughs> but, yeah. Well, no, because I feel like artists should trade knowledge and help each other because I can't do what you do. I, my brain doesn't work that way. My hand doesn't work that way, but I would love to learn, you know, and I feel like everyone should... Who, who turns down education and information? I'll teach you if you teach me how to do your stuff. I would. <laughs> Love knowledge. to know. Sometimes I just go into autopilot and I'm like, what the fuck is happening? I hope this turns out good. Um, wait, okay. So we, we touched a little bit on your apprenticeship, but I don't know your apprenticeship story. Can I'm I'm curious. Yeah, I'm curious I kinda too, wanna dive into that. You've been since I've been in the tattoo industry, which is not very long, you've been like we were said earlier, like probably the most famous tattooer in the world. So it just seems like you've just always been huge in the industry. But I'm sure it started at some point. So I'd yeah. love to find out like how you got into it and kind of when you got into it. And I, well, after college, obviously. Right. So you went to cr- FIT. Yeah. And then. It's so crazy hearing people say you're probably the, what is it? Big, most famous. Most famous. That yeah. so, sounds so fucking weird to me. And I just want to clarify, even if for moments that seems true, that doesn't mean I'm the best or the strongest or the most impressive or the blah, blah, blah. I think I just have a really big outreach, you know, Mm. and I fucking hope I'm doing the right shit with it. Like, I hope I'm sending the right messages and I hope, you know, it, it, when I hear something like that, I'm like, okay, what example am I setting? It's gotta be like, like, kind of like intimate, like daunting a little bit. You're like, oh shit, this is. It's a tinge of like, um, definitely a tons of imposter syndrome, lots of imposter syndrome. Like, is my reality the same as their reality? Like, you know, um, because even you know back to like my apprenticeship and everything i um i was in new york city living in new york city and i knew that i didn't want to work in fashion forever because i sat at a cubicle all day every day and did artwork for people that were not appreciative i wasn't changing people's lives putting these beads on this fucking jean jacket you know and getting paid like 11 dollars an hour for someone else to put their name on my artwork like i felt like i was in a cage and i just couldn't do it and so there's no way at the time i could have afforded to live in new york city and be an apprentice because you have to dive in all of the way especially you know 12 years ago 13 years ago when you know i started my apprenticeship or when i started tattooing 12 or 13 years ago yeah um apprenticeships were like it's all day every day 
You're there yeah. all fucking day. It's your life. It's your full time fucking job. You don't have time for a job. No. You are an apprentice. That's your. And I wanted to devote that amount of time to it. I wanted. Yeah. And so the only way I could do that was basically move back to Pennsylvania to my hometown where things life was just slower. Things were easier, cheaper, more comfortable. It was more reasonable for me to like, you know, get an apartment and be able to devote all of that yeah. time. And so um, I started my apprenticeship with this dude. At the time, he was a really fucking cool dude. And this was like 13 years ago, you said? Uh -huh. Like 2010 ish? 20, no, no, no. 2012. It was 2012, 12 okay. years ago. Oh, um, oh yeah, it's 2024. No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Almost, so we're like, yeah, yeah. Right, in, right in that 12th year. It's, get, it's early and it's taken me a second, you know. I messed yeah. up January 3rd. I was like, January 3rd, 2023. Nope. Um, That's, you can give yourself a few days grace, I think. Totally. Sure. It was on a Polaroid though. So it just made it look oh. really ugly when I scribbled it out. It was a good one. So it sucked. <laughs> Next one would be better. <laughs> um, but uh, I started my apprenticeship with this. Wow. I haven't actually ever talked about my apprenticeship publicly or because it was kind of a weird not great experience and I think I had a really negative outlook on it until until recently and I think it's because I was just really angry like we said I was angry for a long time and I'm not angry anymore but um I don't know I think I just endured a lot of, of treatment that I didn't I didn't realize at the time was not okay. I thought that's just how it is. That's how the industry is. I better get used to it. I didn't realize that I actually had power to stand up for myself and set boundaries and do all of those things. And um, it wasn't a known thing back no, then. No, no, no. When I started apprenticing, we were in a private studio. I was working under this artist and he didn't teach me much, to be honest. The very first tattoo that I ever fucking did was on one of his ex-girlfriends and I remember like holding the machine and I was so nervous and I was pulling a line and I was so scared and you know he'd come over and be like what the fuck is that and I would be like I don't know you tell me I, I literally don't know I, you know and he'd be like all right listen I'm going down to get some cigarettes with blah 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 by the time I come back you better have started the shading and shit like that where like we didn't practice on fake skin we didn't practice on fruit i literally did my first fucking tattoo on one of his ex-girlfriends mm. and i was expected to i don't know it, it that's how it started that was the first you know wow but then it went into things like one another artist came to the private studio we worked and started working with us and this dude treated me with fucking kindness and he taught me shit and he calmly explained shit to me and i remember my mentor saying to me like i said to him one day i was like hey i googled why this is happening and blah 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 and he was like don't you ever ask anyone anything i am your mentor your knowledge comes from me you don't take any information from other people and blah 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 and, and i don't know i don't know it, it got to a point where we went from the private studio to opening our new uh, a new shop like we opened a shop while i was still apprenticing and I started getting really busy, like more booked out than some of the ar other artists. Yeah. And he would say shit to me like, you wouldn't be so booked if people knew what you look like without makeup on. Oh, God, dude. Type of shit. And now I think it's now like that I'm, now that I'm an adult, because even if you're grown up, you're, you're not an adult. I feel like I became an adult like a few months ago, really. Before you realize how powerful you are, you accept the things that people say to you, right? And for a long time, I think I let those hurtful things change how I felt about myself. And I'm not mad at him anymore because I realized I had the choice whether to let that in my long-term memory or not, right? Like, they're just words. And, yeah. and I allowed them to mean something to me because I wanted something so bad, you know? <sighs> And, yeah. um, but that kind of shit happening so much, so much that it was such a bad place for me to be in. Cause I was literally, I'd go into work with my tail between my legs and, you know, 
it was a shitty it was just shitty. Why would you ever yeah. want to make anyone feel like that yeah. ever? Insecurity. It's it's yeah. It's insecurity and it's projection, but it's fucked up. It's fucked. It up, is dude. fucked up. And and they know I feel like it's these men who are in desperate need of a power role. I mean, not not just men, anybody. Um but you know, it, it, they're like in a desperate need of like being in power. And I think it's just like they need that validation for themselves that they're powerful because they feel the opposite of themselves. Mm -hmm. And they put, again, projection, projecting, projecting that onto you and, yeah. and trying to bring you down when you're starting to be popular. And I feel like that is such, unfortunately, a common thing. I think more common back then. I think it's yeah. getting a little better now. People are like, okay, no, we don't have to take this shit anymore. But um, I, I'm just like you. I feel like maybe just last night, I'm like, fuck it like it is just words people are people are just remember insecure. remember what i told you last night it's like it's like voodoo right it's only powerful if you give it power right mm -hmm. like you have to you have to make something powerful you have to give that energy to it to, for it to come alive and if you don't give it energy it's not gonna fucking happen yeah. yeah you know i feel like it's easier in retrospect too but like when you're in the moment especially when the culture of the tattoo industry at the time was like, that's how it is. And you have to take this. Um, I even can think back, like back when I was in, in music and doing drum corps stuff and just getting treated like horribly. And I remember just saying like, Oh, like this is how it is. I didn't think like, Oh, I don't have to take this, you know? And I didn't really like think about it until later. I was like, yeah, that was, that was really fucked up. You know? Yeah. Hard shit. And the truth is, what doesn't kill you does make you stronger and but it should change you in the right way right you should never leave a person or a situation worse than you found it right is that the saying always leave someone or something better than yeah. how you found them you know yeah and so you know when i left that horribly toxic shop that i was in obviously my mentor did all this old wildly hilarious shit whatever um but I really believe that the universe, the universe gives you what you deserve, but it also gives you what you give it. Like when you still retain a positive attitude and, and you retain gratitude and you're thankful for all of the good things and you focus on those on those things, dude, the universe loves gratitude. It's going to come back in, in ways and it's up to you to recognize those ways. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So like from that shitty situation I was in, mm -hmm. I at the time was... Um, dating my ex his name is josh we um i was like well, what am i gonna do i can't be in this situation and he's like fuck it we at the time were hoarders literally like there should have been a sh fucking tv show about us we had a problem we were like hoarders uh, mm. like going to antique stores and yard sales and like getting all this weird cool shit and so we opened up an oddities parlor that was half you know oddities parlor half private studio Whoa. and so cool. It was a really amazing thing for me because I hit the fucking jackpot, dude. And in that small town in Pennsylvania, I had two groups of girls, two separate friend groups of girls that were my clients, right? Like this friend group was my were my clients and this friend group were my clients. And at the time, um, I, well, not just at the time, I fucking strongly believe the universe gives me the clients I need when I need them. I swear to God, like the universe has put people in my chair that I have connected to more deeply than people I've known for 30 fucking years. Like, and I know in that moment we're supposed to be together. And so during that period, these two groups of girls, um, they trusted me. They supported supported me they were excited about my art mm. like i was like there's no girl tattooers in that fucking town yeah so i found a void i found a hole in the market that no one was providing these types of tattoos at all mm. and so and what so what kind of tattooing was it at that point um the same stuff i'm doing now honestly i looked back at those years specifically these two groups of girls and um I really like the tattoos a lot. I forgot how much I loved that old style. Um, but I did something for them and they did something for me. And we almost understood each other because no one tattooed like that. And the people I've experienced so far would never trust me enough to do my art yeah. on them, you mm. know. But 
the best thing about it was the first group of girls worked at Ulta, right? So they're all these like hot, like gorgeous chicks that worked at Ulta that were fucking billboards for my art to all of the, you know, women going to buy these products and everything mm. that would see these girls with the wristlets on their hands. So that mm. blew the fuck up. Yeah, I okay? bet. And then wow. the other group of girls that I tattooed were all of these like smoke show, like smoking hot um, uh, strippers, right? Yeah. Basically. Yeah. And they were fun as hell, cool as fuck. They were super comfortable letting me experiment and do all kinds of cool, drapey, like beautiful wow. things on their mm. bodies. And then they were a billboard nude for me. Yeah. You know, like yeah. my billboard as they would, you know, dance and every, you know, and everything. And um, it was the best advertising I could have wow. ever had. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah. Is that around when like people started recognizing your work? Like when do you feel like was a moment where you're like, OK, people are seeing what I can do? Uh, to be completely honest, I think I blew up for a second in the very beginning of my career. Um, because when I first started tattooing i was dating josh balls and at the time um he was in this band called motionless and white mm. and i would go on tour with josh you know for weeks or we go for a month or whatever and i would tattoo people along the road but i'd yeah. be tattooing these like musicians and shit nice. at the time that instagram just started yeah. and so i was like in that scene for a while you know like went mm. to the ap awards and like you know, wow. he yeah. took me to do all of that cool That's shit. So neat. And Sick. so a bunch of eyes were on me um, just for being a part. It was such a subculture. Motionless and White had such a huge following and the fans were like really dedicated and like yeah. mm -hmm. really passionate. And so they were really invested in, in the, you know, the, the guys, the dudes and the and so I was part of that for a while. And so I sort of gained this. Um, all of these eyes on me basically from that catalyst, you know, and then from there I started tattooing um, like Maria Brink from in this moment mm -hmm. and, you know, and so on and so forth. I tattooed um, Dee Snyder's family, Dee Snyder and his whole family. And so Josh brought me into that music realm really, really early on with a lot of really fucking cool people that yeah. just wow. it was the right place at the right yeah, time. Yeah. And yeah. Wow. Wow. Yeah. So it was right kind of from the start too. That that's great because I feel like there's a lot of artists that do really fucking cool work, but it sounds like you are a pioneer in your style too. I guess so. I didn't know at the time. Um, I didn't realize that at the time. And it is, I guess this is why I feel so guilty when I hear like you guys say like, you know, you're the most known artist in the world or whatever, because in one, something that's really frustrating for me is seeing all these tattooers on social media on Instagram that have 1500 followers, 4000 followers, 8000 followers and they're brilliant. And they're fucking brilliant. They're brilliant. Why isn't the world looking too. at them? Like yeah. Everyone's looking at me and I'm here doing my fucking song and dance and I'm doing the best I can, but there's so many artists that are blowing my fucking mind and people should be looking at them. Yeah. Right? And so it yeah. It makes me feel, I don't know, it makes me feel a little guilty because have mm. I worked hard? Absolutely. fucking -lutely. But a lot of people work really hard and deserve it and they don't get it for some reason, right? And it's just, I it's, don't know. It's because it's like for a tattooer and, and to be able to do it all, you have to be a good business person or have a good business person. You need to be a photographer. You need to be a designer. You need to be... Um, you know, good social. It's like all of these parts into tattooing that makes you successful. And that's nothing to feel guilty about. Let's talk about survivor's guilt. I feel yeah. like that's almost a touch on that. I feel like, why am I and all of these? I mean, yeah. it's because you worked, you still, you worked your ass off and totally. people could have given all the platforms that you had and still have not made it where they are today. So I hope you don't think for a second that you should feel bad or guilty because you worked your ass off thank and you're you. very talented thank you for yeah. that so i just want to make that clear thank you for that um but i want i kind of yeah, i kind of want but i kind of want my life to be like at the end of mean girls where the crown's broken up into a bunch of little pieces <laughs> <laughs> and they're distributed amongst all of the you know what i mean like great it great. should be that so, way cinematic that good? Moment. Yeah. Oh, yeah. it was it was touching like i fucking that that's the way it should be though yeah. you know what i mean like 
and also, I, can I just say too, it's great. I'm, I'm so glad. And that's why I love doing this podcast with you. That's why I love you as a person is that you are so supportive of other people. And that's something that I, that's why I enjoy our conversations. Um, I feel like there's so many people out there and even like people and tattooers who make podcasts and stuff, and they spend so much time ripping apart what other people are doing, what, even though it's not hurting anyone or themselves and judging and not being happy for other people for being successful. Dude, hurt people hurt people. That's what yeah. that is. Yeah. Well, and, I... and it's not fucking okay, to be honest. Right. If you're going to make a podcast, do a fucking podcast. Do 100 podcasts. If you don't get on and just talk shit about other people and produce negativity and stir that energy up and put it out into the world. You're, you're not making the world a better place talking shit and putting someone down and putting their art down, putting their it's it's how they price. You are how not, they, it's, it's, it's 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 no one's fucking business, yeah. to be honest. It just means you need to, I think, focus on yourself more. on yourself, dude. Yeah. On, you focus on yourself, mm -hmm. like on yourself. If you're that worried about what someone else is doing, it's striking a chord within yourself that you're doing something wrong or you're jealous or you're you're. You know, that's that's within you. Yeah. But I absolutely do not fucking support using this platform and using this like beautiful thing we have going to get on and talk shit on other people. It's yeah. never OK. Well, I think it goes back to like what you were saying about about your mentor. It all comes from a place of insecurity, you know, totally. And and even him, like I could like totally come on here and be like this motherfucker did all these fucking things because that was just the begin. Those were that was the beginning. Yeah. But it doesn't fucking matter. I'm not here trying to trash him. I'm not here trying to blah, 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 blah. These things happen to me and I don't feel bad talking about them because even that story, it was so long ago. It's 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 more of a story of hope, meaning like those things happened to me and it was up to me how I survived and yeah. what I did with them and what I became. And it's up to you whether, you know, is it going to be an obstacle or a tool? Yes. Right. It yeah. I thought it was an obstacle, but it wasn't, dude. It was a fucking tool. So I'm actually grateful. Like, thank you for teaching me what I will never be. Thank you for showing me an example of everything that is going wrong with with not just, you know, tattooing, but with fucking society. You never break someone down to build yourself up. That is never yeah. going to work to your advantage. Yeah. I feel like a great lesson to learn with that, with those situations is like what you won't accept in the future. It's almost like being in a bad relationship when somebody treats you a certain way and you're like, okay, now I know I'm not going to be in another relationship where I'm treated like yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. And I also want to like note that we've, we've all experienced insecurity and jealousy and yeah, you know, I, I have not been perfect my whole life but I think just recognizing it and trying your best and growing I, that is I think everybody needs to do that well, everybody has done some shit dude you know? feeling those things no one I've even had a little bit of a problem to be honest with this cancel culture like mm -hmm. somebody makes a mistake and they get a death sentence mm -hmm. that's not teaching them anything you're yeah. fighting hatred with hatred and, and they're not growing and evolving and you're not changing the trajectory or showing them how to be. You're just bullying yeah. the bully. And I don't think that um, mm -hmm. everything just goes away. Like if you say, I'm sorry, poof, that doesn't mean it goes away. But right, because well, they don't well, disappear off the face of their if they're still living each day. Yeah. yeah. Well, I think, too, you also have to just allow people room to grow, yes. you know, because. Yeah, it's just what makes you in in my opinion, and there have been some things going on in the last few years in the you know tattoo community with people doing and saying stupid shit, dude. Right? Yeah. Do you know how much stupid shit I have said and done in moments of ignorance? Where same same. Thank God it was never recorded, and for those people, it was. And like, I'm not saying everyone should go around saying all this weird shit. We make mistakes. And, and you feel guilty about it afterwards. But for some people, those mistakes are echoed over and over and over. And it's up to those people to be vulnerable and share with the world why they were why they were wrong. Right. Yeah. Why they were wrong. Yeah. Why that was wrong. Why that was incorrect. And for me, it's more rewarding giving someone the opportunity to show 
you who they really are? Like, do they come around? Do they feel remorse? What message are they sending to the rest of the world? Are they taking accountability? And if they're checking all of those boxes and trying, you can't cancel that person because they're growing. You know, yeah. They're growing still. Yeah. Well, and that's what I was, that's what right. I meant when I said like leave room for growth. Cause I feel like sometimes, and it's always hard to tell if somebody's like genuine on social media, right? But sometimes somebody will put out an apology or whatever. And it could be something that they did years ago and everybody's like, oh, you're only saying that because you got caught, which has its place sometimes, I feel like for sure. But yeah, you also have to leave Absolutely. room for the possibility that, especially if it's a situation that happened years ago, it's like, oh, I understand that this wasn't OK. I'll never do it again. I understand that it hurt people. And you have that self-reflection and growth. And then what do you do to counterbalance that that negative ripple that you started? You start a positive ripple and you yeah. contribute something to the world that will change someone's mind for the better after that. Right. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Like you don't just remain neutral. You turn it the other way, take it in a, literally the opposite direction and pay it back. You know, yeah. yeah. Hurt people, hurt people, right? hurt people, hurt people. Quote of the century. I think it's a Joe Rogan quote, isn't it? Is it? <laughs> He's probably said it. At it's some not point. from me. <laughs> Or no, it's probably like some really like super famous like intellectual philosopher and it's like a known quote. I just heard Joe Rogan say it and I'm like, no, that's by Joe Rogan. He said it first. It's not. I think Joe Rogan got it from Deanna, actually. That's where I got it. From who? Got it from. Deanna. <laughs> oh, you were the oh you were the original? OG. Oh, the the I was philosopher the first. <laughs> that said hurt people, hurt ne people. No, next time I come it says hurt people, hurt people. Deanna. Deanna I get a little tattoo. <laughs> A quote tattoo by Deanna. I think of Michael Scott in the office. What, what does he say? Uh, you miss 100% of the shots you don't take. It's a Wayne Gretzky quote, but then he quotes himself <laughs> saying it. Yeah. yeah. No, perfect. Well, um, so it's kind of a hot topic right now, but you just got done with the season of, of Ink Master. Yep. Um, we have a very close personal friend who was on this podcast recently that won has been taking a lot of negativity online. Uh, I was just, I, you voted for a different way than it went, but I was just curious if you've had to deal with any of that kind of like negativity or backlash from just the whole situation or like how that's been for you since the, sh since the finale. Aired. Like if I deal with negativity and backlash like this season yeah. or generally. Yeah. Well, in, in general too. Yeah. And how you deal with that. Cause I feel like it's tough. So I've been having a few like really long talks with Bobby recently because I think the best thing I can do besides being the most honest, uncomfortably honest, because Bobby's a friend of mine as well. So voting against Bobby fucking hurts, dude. The day yeah. I voted, the, when I had to eliminate you, I fucking cried in the back. I told you that. Like, I know. It's, you it's painful. It sucks. <laughs> so but sweet. it's really important for me to be as absolutely sincere as i can no matter what that answer is or what that vote is right yeah. and that's important yeah. but for me it was even it's even more important to show my support my personal support to the artists after the competition because no one understands how hard it is psychologically when the cameras shut when the cameras turn off right when the finale ends and everyone sees the winner and turns off their tv and makes their comments you know that's when it begins for people sometimes that's when the journey actually begins because yeah. You start to question who you really are and and you do have that survivor's guilt like like is it really me did i really deserve it i wish it was this other person you almost for me at least you wish it was someone else because it's so much to bear it's it's mm -hmm. um it's heavy you know like they say heavy is the head that holds the crown yeah it and it is and Bobby is such a good fucking person. Mm -hmm. Bobby is such a sincere, sweet, genuine person that feels a lot of shit. Yeah. And so he's he he's not taking the win lightly. He just wants to make sure in his heart and his soul that he was the right person to win, right? And so um, I've been talking to Bobby a lot recently about all the backlash and all the talks and all of that shit. And it's like, Bobby, if you don't, go on the internet and you don't read the comments does that change your day like is your is your 
life going to dramatically shift if you take a day off of reading the yeah. comments? And, and the answer is going to be no, your life's probably going to improve. So why are you reading any of the fucking comments? And you're yeah. reading them because you're not sure how you feel about yourself. You're mm. not sure how you feel about winning yet. It's not like you're going on looking for support. Like you go on and you can scroll through a thousand good comments. And if there's 300 within those thousand that are negative, you're only going to focus on those. Or one. You're looking yeah. for a reason <sighs> yeah. to believe they were wrong, you know? And yeah. so for Bobby, it's like, of course he's deserving. Of course he's in every way what it takes to be an Ink Master, dude. His tattoos are fucking incredible. And he's incredible. And right? he's been incredible. And he's been in, he, I, I've looked up to Bobby for a really long time, to Same. be honest. A really long time. And um, I think... I think it's such a sensitive thing because someone critiquing your art and your your worth in terms of you as an artist is different than somebody critiquing your outfit or your choice of blah, 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 or any of that because your art comes from your soul. And that's why it's yeah. so hard afterwards because the entire world is ripping apart your tattoos and your work and telling you in their opinion if they think you're good enough for him yeah. or not. Especially most of them who don't do tattoos. Absolutely. Or Absolutely. Well, and it's and like yeah. who's whose opinions actually matter, dude? Yeah. It's your opinion, Bobby. How do you feel about yourself? You know? Well, yeah. and I think why it's especially tough for Bobby and any artist that is also like this, but Bobby is so critical of his own work already. Like that, that collab <laughs> that they just did that you were showing everyone, like he, he almost, he told me like before he saw the photo, photo, he was like, he's like, yeah, I was going to tell Deanna that I didn't want to post it because he thought it could be better, which is ridiculous, right? Because you saw the picture, but that's like how fucking hard he is on himself. And so I think when, when you're like that, to whatever degree, when you start to see stuff like that, it's just, it's tough to, it's tough to get past those negative comments, you know? Dude, when Bobby came and guest spotted with us at Elysium, he brought this client that he was working on and she was doing this chess piece and he's just casually like, yeah, just doing this chess piece. And I'm looking at this chess piece being like, what the fuck? You're just casually putting this in with a smile on your face. And Bobby's like, oh, you have to see her other work. And I'm like, oh, you did other work on her? This girl like, you know, pulls her joggers down and, and you know, takes the hoodie off or whatever. She has a full body suit by Bobby. Have you seen his full body suit? No? Of course you haven't seen it. No one's seen it because he's never taken <laughs> pictures of it. It's a full he doesn't fucking post body anything. suit. Both sides. I have pictures and videos on my phone because I went home that night literally and was yeah. staring at it, studying it. You wait till you see this shit. I would love to put it on the internet, but Bobby hasn't premiered it yet. And I guess I can't just post a video of his fucking tattoo if the world hasn't seen it yet. But but when I saw that, I was like, Bobby, dude, what are you doing? And then I realized, like, to, to what I was thinking to Bobby was, what are you doing? Like, you have to put this on the Internet. Like, do you know how good this is? You This will crush. This will crush. And then I realized that Bobby doesn't give a fuck about a photo crushing on the Internet. Yeah. Bobby gives a fuck about his art. Yeah. He gives a fuck uh. about his art art that's yeah. what he cares about you know yes. like and it was cool that he didn't have to post every little piece of it along the process and get the the validation from the internet every single time like it's gonna be amazing it's gonna be great bobby oh my god it's wild it's not even done no bobby doesn't need any of that he's waiting until his body of art is body of work is completed to premiere how it should be you know like yeah. he showed me has like hundreds of pictures on his phone that hundreds. he has not posted like, he's like a secret tattooer dude incredible it's he's powerful like a, he's like a speakeasy tattooer right yeah. like you know he's good <laughs> yeah. but his best shit he like hoards and keeps secret for some reason Ugh. you know he came to my baby's preschool and painted faces with me for a few hours oh my god that's cute it was me Arlo, Jacob Sheffield, and it was while Bobby was guest spotting, we all went to the preschool and we painted 53 faces of kids that were under six. Stop. 53. That is cute. Yeah. Do you have pictures of that? Dude, those oh, yeah. kids are so yeah. fucking oh, yeah. lucky. Like, Dude, yeah. Can, you, can but you imagine? It, but nobody knew it was not an, it wasn't, it hadn't aired yet that um, Bobby had won, so we couldn't tell anyone. So no one knew that he was like, 
the winner do. you know yeah, the, yeah, yeah. yeah so it was such a secret but i'm thinking to myself like oh my god these kids parents are such big fans of ink master if they had only any idea like well now when Bobby they think about there. that or tell the story they're like dude yeah. multiple yeah. ink masters yeah. but but anyway it's it's basically the thing is about ink master and i tell people this all the fucking time all the fucking time ink master is such an incredible experience but it's unlike anything you've ever experienced before it's a world and yeah. a bubble that you live in for months. It's an alternate reality. Yep. And it's up to you on what you do with it and how you perceive that. For for a lot of the competitors, um, it's one of the coolest things that you can do in your life. Yes. And and the bonds and the connections that you make with other tattooers changes you forever. Yeah. And it's such a specific, such a specific like um situation that you're in that it it's almost like everyone that's competed or has been a part of ink master it's almost like an alumni right an alumni support group of people that understand each other even if you don't know each other all of the way you're yeah. part of some weird club because you all experience the same alternate reality together you know yeah and um i think that uh yeah i think the most important thing for Bobby to remember is that it actually I was just I was thinking of this conversation I had with Bobby and what I told him I told him some fucking crazy story do you want to hear a crazy story Tell do we have me. time am I talking over we this have, whole we podcast plenty. we have all the time in the world I don't mean to talk over you guys and like totally but no, I just thought is, about this, you're, this you're, is the, about you're the you. guest on the podcast yeah, you interview so many people this is you so I was talking to Bobby the other day um, because it is important, though, we all support each other because I have been there. I do know what it feels like. Do. Like we should all talk. We should all support each other. Right. Like like all these things like that Bobby has been feeling. It's been such a whiplash because you want to feel happy for yourself. But Bobby feels sad for Freddie and for John. And, and he, so he feels guilty because he loves them and he's questioning whether he's all of these things right and so um i told bobby about the night that i won ink master right and everyone i'm sure always assumes it's like a fairy tale and for so long people are, how did it feel to win you know what the truth is you know what happened the night that i won so at the time ink master was filmed the finale was filmed in um that one was in new york city and it was season eight season eight yeah yeah and um i lived in pennsylvania and so i went to new york a few days early um to like you know uh like practice and do the run-throughs and all that yeah and the day that i left for new york it was three days early our um our dog was sick we had a 15 year old rescue little pomeranian and he was coughing kind of weird. And I said to my ex, you know, Josh at the time, I was like, he's not feeling good. I think you should, you know, take him in. So and then I went to New York for the finale. So the finale day happened. And at the time, the finales in Ink Master were live. Yeah. So live, live. Yeah. Like it's you on the stage and like thousands of people. It's wild. And so... um, my finale, we did a seven hour live tattoo. So we were in there tattooing literally the entire day. And when you're filming and you're tattooing, you're in the world, you're in tunnel vision. Yeah. Yeah. So we finished the tattoo, the show starts, all the people are crowding in. There's thousands of people. And I'm like looking up, trying to find like my family, you know, I'm trying to find my family. And um, I finally look up and found like my mom and my grandma and Josh wasn't there. My ex wasn't there. And right when I realized he wasn't there, I knew something was wrong. And so I'm standing on the stage, you know, and the lights are on and they're talking at you. And in my, my mind is somewhere else, but I'm doing the smile and nod, like what's happening? What is wrong? What is wrong? And every time it would be a commercial break and the cameras would cut, I would, you know, look up to my family and say to my mom, like, mom, where is Josh? Where is Josh? And my mom would go, right, and totally dodge. And so finally I was getting pissed being like, mom, where is Josh? I'm like mouthing this to her. She's like up on this balcony. And my mom's, I heard my mom, I not heard her. I saw my mom go, everything is okay. And I'm like, okay, everything is not okay. Everything is not okay. 
And so, um, no. and so, um, like I won and it was this crazy thing and it was like really wild and it was super whiplash because I have this pit in my stomach anxiety about what's going on. Like where yeah. is my boyfriend and, and what's happening? Did he get into an accident? Like whatever. And so the cameras cut and I said to the producers, I was like, I need my phone now. I need my phone now. And like all of the newspapers, you know, the cameras are coming and they're trying to take all the photos and doing all everybody get in the group doing the shots and there's confetti and everyone is celebrating and i finally get on the phone with my um ex and um i'm like hey are you okay and he is sobbing and here what had happened was he drove all the way to new york city for the finale got to the finale went in with my mom got to the balcony got a call from our, our vet that our dog was dying Saw me on stage for a second, Ugh. turned around, drove three and a half hours home and like literally like spent the night like like holding our dog. Our dog died. Died. Oh my God. While I was on stage. I swear I can like cry about him, but it was, <clears throat> it was while I was on stage oh. winning. And, and if anyone like knows me or knew me then or knew this dog, dude, <laughs> this dog was like, I feel like in life we have even if you have a lot of dogs, you have one special dog, right? Yeah. Have you, you know what I'm talking about? Like you have yes. your special dog, yes. the one. Yeah. This was our special dog, our special dog, like <sighs> love of my life, child dog. And so instead of going out and partying and celebrating, there's hundreds of people. All my friends are in New York City. I had a mental fucking breakdown on stage in front of everyone, dude. I crumbled i went into full hysterical mode i couldn't oh. fill out the paperwork for the, the money or anything and <clears throat> went i was supposed to stay in new york for the next few days to celebrate drove home with my family that night and spent the night that i won literally like holding my dog's body that's how i spent the night that i won it was sorry i'm like crying and emotional it was really fucked up and so for the longest time everyone was so happy for me but in my mind it was so traumatic the whiplash of like the best day of my life and the worst thing that could ever fucking happen happened within the same moments right and so in my mind I couldn't disassociate the two memories winning was so closely attached to losing my dog that I started getting these like this like phobia like really paranoid that I like energetically like I wanted it so bad that I like sucked his soul out of him like, or something. Like I felt like he sacrificed his life, like his last energy to give it to me so I could win, you know? And I was so fucked up about it for a while, for a really long time, really long time. And the whole point of the story is, the whole point of the story is, I promise this story has a point. I'm sorry it's going on for so long. When I was telling Bobby this the other day, I told Bobby that, it was hindsight's always 2020, right? So looking back, I realized it was the best fucking thing that could have ever happened to me. That dog gave me, he left me with the greatest gift of all in those last moments because winning changed my life. It changed my life. In that moment, my life changed. And instead of me going out, getting drunk, getting fucked up, partying in New York City, being an asshole, he made me come home to my family, right? I spent the night with my family, holding my most loved ones, dead ass sober, crying together, being together. And in that night, I realized what's actually important. He brought me the fuck home, you know? Like, he like made me realize that like, you can have everything in the world. You could win Ink Master. You could have thousands of people fucking cheering for you. And it doesn't fucking matter if you don't have, you know, the people that you actually love that actually love you. And so he humbled my fucking ass, dude. He humbled me. And he and he reminded me that, like, there's nothing that, like, glory or fame or success are, are ever going to give you or, or, or fulfill you that has to come from within. So, like, it was the coolest. Yeah. In hindsight, it was the coolest thing I think that he could have left me with is just, all right, bitch try this whiplash you can have everything but like humble yourself you remember who you are 
Like it was cool. Yeah. How powerful. So I, and I told Bobby this story because, you know, I wanted him to realize that like, it's the same thing for him. Like people are going to leave comments. People are going to say shit. People are going to have their opinions, but whose opinion actually matters? Like, yeah. You have a beautiful fucking family. You have friends that love you so much and tattooers that have respected you for 10 years and looked like you're Bobby, you're you're incredible, you know? And and so I just wanted to remind him that like what really matters. What really matters. Like yes, you won and that's incredible, but don't let it clog your mind. Don't think in your mind you have to be you have to be everyone's ink master. You have to be someone for these people and these masses. Like People that know you love you, you know, and, and what else matters other, other than that? Like, so nice. I don't know. It's just a reality check that you have to have with yourself sometimes. Thank you, you for know? sharing that yeah. I've never us. talked about that. Like, Jesus Christ. That's... Usually when I talk about it, I'm like really stoned, like texting it. And so yeah. it's like I've never, I don't know, I've said that out loud, I think, on any. But that's actually, that's a real and story. It's just a good wow. reminder yeah. for everybody, including myself yeah. too it's yeah i feel like such a dork getting emotional about it but it was well, at the time it was knows. devastating what? everybody devastating. knows because because everyone's texting me everyone's texting me brrr, freaking out and i'm literally holding my dog's body it was traumatic like i could not get the two but like i said it's like yeah and with the even with the apprenticeship thing right time heals all in a way where if you can understand what the universal lesson actually is you're never going to miss out on anything you know both of those things are are like gifts from the universe lessons from the universe i'm so fucking happy i learned you know like thank yeah. you for that all these years later you know talking to you has, has been a good reminder that there is there is lessons that you can learn with everything that's that's tough totally. you're like what has that taught you even last night you're like what what did it teach you mm -hmm. what is yeah such a good reminder you got to see it that way and and even if the lesson unfortunately is what not to do or who not to be or you know someone is setting an example of the you know <laughs> of a person that you realize wow i feel really it's a yeah, it's a good reminder too, even because it keeps you on track of who you want to be and and yeah. your highest self and yeah. So when you won, did you have to deal with any kind of like, was there any controversy surrounding the season where people were like, Gian was robbed. And what did we say yesterday? <laughs> people can say whatever they want to you, but nothing hurts like the truth. And so in my soul, I also felt like honestly, like. Gian's fucking awesome. Gian is awesome. And Incredible my imposter right. syndrome made me feel so long like Gian should have won. He should have won. I felt that way. And so it hurts when other people say it because I also believe it. You know what I mean? Ugh. And but I tell, yeah. you know, I understand that. It's Ink Master is not a a Ink Master is not a competition of who is the best tattoo artist ink master is a game that tattooers play it's methodical it's yeah. mentally challenging psychologically challenging physically challenging sometimes it's a game that you play dude you roll yeah. the dice every time and if one skull pick was flipped or one canvas was flipped everything would change it's it's the domino effect yeah right yeah if you can go back in time and change you know swap two canvases out in the first episode i guarantee you it would have a different result and, yeah. and yeah. the end yeah you know i still one of my one of the coolest things still is that old school 90s trad chromed out chest sternum stomach piece that you did on the finale god i hated that i loved it so much because <laughs> I, I was so pissed i was it. so pissed i I wasn't pissed at Kelly. I had more respect for Kelly because I was like, wow, you're really playing, aren't you? You're really good there. Um, and I was so bummed that I had to do it. I was so bummed that I had to do that tattoo. And then um, as I started drawing it and as I started designing it, I was like, dude, this is kind of fun, actually. It's It was <laughs> like, this is gonna be kind of fire. So fun, right? So sick and so different I would, from what you normally do. Like, uh, that. 
that's when I was like, oh, fuck, she's she's incredible. Dude, I practiced on so many people in Pennsylvania, like 90s new school, um, chrome shit. Um, my best friend Tina has like um, the yin yang of like a flaming eyeball and a gooey eyeball. Like that's t- sick. To, to practice <laughs> yeah, the colors, the techniques, yeah. the machines. Like I did probably like five tattoos with the machine, with the inks, in the style before I attempted that to make sure like I knew what the fuck I was doing before I even yeah, yeah got into that. Smart. And the respect you had for that style, like to learn like really how to get down and dirty with mm-hmm. like all of that, it, mm-hmm. it was perfect. Yeah, so. and it's it's hard now looking back. I'm sure every every artist knows, even if you just look at your work from a few years ago, you see it with clearer eyes now, right? And you would do it differently yeah. now even just a few years ago and so when After I every tattoo I do I think of all the things I could have done differently I know. if I did it two minutes ago mm-hmm. same oh it's constantly yeah yeah you always know when something's off even if you don't know you just don't know right what it is it. do you ever try looking at it in a mirror I mean I have I look at it in the mirror when they're up there towards the end but I didn't think to do it throughout the piece whenever I think something is off and I'm not sure what it is I go I look at it and, and I really study it. And then I take my client to the mirror, look in the mirror together. Cause mm. when you see the opposite of it, like, you know, when you're drawing on procreate and then you flip it and you realize things are wonky or off, but you yeah. didn't see it yeah. correctly. Um, Ugh. try that next time. Smart. It'll, it'll be like an instant, like, Oh, smart. Or take a photo of it, go, you know, to the bathroom, get a sip of water or whatever, come back in a few minutes and look at it as a photo. Yeah. Because you'll see things instantly in photos that you didn't see in the, you know, tattoo as you were doing it. So Why smart. am I so clumsy? Do you see me over here, like, <laughs> trying to get my coffee? Do you have, like, a <laughs> like a favorite tattoo you've you've ever done? Ever? Or mm. a few tattoos that are your favorites? <sighs> I'm trying to think. There's Do a you, bunch Diana? that I really, really love. That but... I've done? Probably my Taiwan piece. Really? That one was your favorite out of all the like panels you've done? Yeah. Yeah. With the but with the tribal that. bottom. Yeah. Yeah. yeah uh, Arlo, to- Arlo told me that's his favorite of yours too last night. He's that's it's his so favorite. sick. Yeah. yeah. It's ridiculous. Yeah, it's it's ridiculous. It um yeah, it's crazy. We look at your shit all the time. We like geek out and just look through your Instagram all the time being like, how are we fucking up? Stop. I'm going to go hide. Let's go see how not good we are compared to Deanna. We like, I'm going to go hide. Well, we root you on though. We don't go on being like this bitch. We go on being like, look at this. Look at this. Some inspo. With yours. I'm like, this bitch. This bitch. How the fuck did she do this? <laughs> Adderall. <laughs> it's always I'm now. excited to do a collab with you. I um, thought you were about to say I'm excited to do Adderall. I thought that was coming out of your mouth. It was like <laughs> collab. Plus. That's what collab, I need to do to do a collab with you. You know, I'll, I'll yeah. do whatever. No, me too. Me too. I'm I'm stoked, dude. I haven't done a collab since um the last time I did the London convention. How long ago was that? Four years? Yeah. No, five years. I haven't done a collab in five years. I'm stoked. It's going to be cool. We've got to start designing. Maybe that'll be your favorite yeah. tattoo that you've ever done. You can't set the bar that high. That's like. I said maybe. That's really. Maybe that is true. That is true. I was like, oh my God, it's too much pressure just hearing that. I can't even entertain that thought. <laughs> there's no There's no way it's not going to be like ridiculous though. We'll, we'll make sure it's sick. Yeah. I know you have ideas too. I'm going to send you some cool stuff. I've just been just pretty things to look at. See if it like sparks yeah. anything in you. And we'll send some stuff back and forth. Yeah. And yeah. we have to find a client. Well, so I think a lot of people want to know, like, what's your, like, day-to-day life like now? How often do you tattoo? Yeah. You filmed in Ink Master oh, a while ago. You have yeah. a baby. You have a You're family. You're traveling all the time. You're, yeah, traveling, yeah. Ink Master, everything. That's, that's life right now. Life for the past little bit's honestly been pretty, um, pretty overwhelming. I wish I had a, like, more positive answer, but it's been a lot. Um, when I tattoo... And I do soon have to break out of this habit of the way that I tattoo because it's not correct. It's not healthy. It's not cool anymore. I'm 36 years old. But, you know, when Arlo and I and, and some others in our shop, the way we tattoo basically is we'll tattoo for 12 hours, 14 hours, 16 hours straight. 
mm. multiple days in a row. Mm. And it's not good. It's not good for us. For some people or for 24-year-old Ryan, it was great. You know, my body is fucking killing me. So I have to change that. But yeah. until I can break the cycle, uh, I tattoo either two or three days a week. Um, but they're usually back to back and they're like, you know, between 12 and yeah, 16 Jesus. hour days, Jesus. three days in a row. You're a um, monster. Even when you were like belly this big, I'm, one of our clients said you were tattooing all yeah. night when you're pregnant. I got that tattoo chair that has the hump in the middle. So my belly would literally rest on the <laughs> hump in the middle of the stool. I tattooed until I was over seven months pregnant. And the only reason I stopped is because COVID shut us down. Mm. I was scheduled. Oh I was scheduled literally up until the week before I was going to give birth. And I was, I was large. It was a large. It was a large thing to have to maneuver around. Um, oh my god! But yeah, it, it's hard because Arlo and I, um, we're balancing a lot because being a tattooer is so all encompassing. It's hard to be anything other than a tattooer. Yeah. And so we're cramming on being a tattooer, being business owners, being parents. Mm. Um, we're hosting a ton of guest artists and visitors and all of that. Mm. And we're stretched really thin these days. And so I, I have one design day that always gets forfeited with business meetings and, you know, bullshit, you know, that's also always the sacrificial day, which and that's is the worst with the client or just to design your stuff to for design. The, yeah. For the it takes me a full time. day to get my like one full day to get my designs done. Cause the stencils take so fucking long. Yeah. yeah. Um, so uh and then two or three days of tattooing and then business meetings brainstorming zoom all of this adult stuff that i really don't want to do mm. i don't want to do it and we've been having you know conversations over the last few days about um you know the work-life balance and how you balance running a business and being a tattooer and the truth is i don't know if you could do both successfully a hundred percent of the time yeah I think you have to kind of, for me at least, I have to focus 100% on something that I want to be good if I really want it to be good. Like I can't half-ass yeah. design and tattoo and half-ass do business at the same time. It's it's two very separate entities. Yeah. And um, so we're trying to f rework our system and our studio a little bit right now and um, pull in some more members, pull in some more team members. We need help because... Arlo and I have been doing, Arlo's been working on the church pretty exclusively for the last few years and he's about to lose his goddamn mind. And so I came on, you know, recently, like hard, um, about six months ago, eight months ago now and tried to start taking over. And it's like, I don't know business. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm a smart person. I, I believe I'm an intelligent person, but business is a whole animal, a whole nother animal. Yeah. You know, people have like master's degrees in, in business, like people professionally do this for a lot of money. It's it's not something easy to figure out. Yeah, That's um, why I, I got him. Yeah, well, you guys are the, you guys are like fucking Bonnie and Clyde. Dude. I do not have a master's degree by any means in business, but no, what I have had that is, is business time, time to figure it out yeah. when I'm not having to tattoo. 16 hours a yeah. day or stencil hours a day yeah you know it's just i i tell everybody this i know what i do on a daily basis i know what a tattooer does on a daily basis there's no possible way that we can do both so when tattooers talk to me about opening a shop i i almost like i almost like don't recommend it to tattoo artists unless you have a strong support system of people that are fucking willing to put in that work because it's yeah. a it's a lot of work you know yeah and like we were you know having a conversation yesterday about how like when i first started coming into tattooing tattoo shops were owned by tattooers and then you know other people started opening tattoo shops that weren't tattooers and it got a bad rap for a second like they're not a tattooer they own a shop you know uh, and that's all i heard the only i didn't have my own opinion that's just the opinion that i heard yeah and the truth is is other people should be owning and running shops that have different types of brains and mentalities than us artists have. Yeah. There has to be someone who can focus 
fully like yeah. it's full focus yeah. on 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 all of these things like it has to be i'm not saying tattooers can't own shops obviously we own a fucking shop but i'm saying like you can't do it all if you yeah. want everything to be successful yeah. you have to have that focus yeah and i and i and i agree i think and we've talked about this before on the show a little bit but i think like what you also need if, if people are going to be involved with running your studio is that those people need to have really deep appreciation for the the industry and the artwork and they need to understand that the artists are are the priority it's not it's not a money-making machine you know so their, their best interest has to be in the back of your mind whenever you make decisions and i think when you're not like that and when people they just they're just out to make money or whatever it is that's when they get a bad rap because i think especially artists are very like I feel like you're just intuitive when it comes to personalities mm -hmm. and stuff like that. You can you can see through that super easily, you know? And so that's when I think people come in and artists don't fuck with them because they can tell they don't have their best interest at heart. Yeah, abso absolutely. I agree totally. And um, I think that, um, you know, people are realizing that artists are, we're assets, man. We're, we're, we're the, we're the, it's the most important it's thing. It's the most important absolutely. thing that, you, that your artists are happy and well taken care of and, and all of these things. And it, it is a, like we've discussed before, tattooing these days, you don't just show up to a shop and do a tattoo and leave. Yeah. That's not what your job is anymore. You have to be your own fucking social media person. You have to be your own videographer. You have to be your own brand, your own, but we're not all built for that. And right. we don't all want yeah. that. Well, you know? yeah, but imagine if that is all you had to do because you had other people well, to help exactly, out. And that's what we've exactly. tried to do here at Eden. And, and that's why, that's why I think it's super beneficial, especially when you go to studio ownership, because that's every tattoo artist really owns their own business in a sense. But when you get to studio ownership and you're dealing with all these other people, like that's really where like, it's too much for one person to do well, in my opinion. I mean, there, I'm sure there are people out there that do it well, but I don't understand how you could do both at a consistently really high level without a lot of help. Absolutely. Right. And it does too depend on like what your what your goals are, you know. Arlo and I um did a guest spot at, at Bang Bang um a couple of months ago and we were blown away by how fucking streamlined it was and how well they treated us. And people have all kinds of opinions on how everyone else runs their business, right? But we experienced that shop firsthand and had an amazing we had an amazing experience to be honest. Yeah. And then coming here and seeing you guys running things similarly in terms of efficiency and like everything is a, a well-oiled machine with lots of moving parts and everyone works together to achieve these things and makes it happen. And, Damn. you know, it's it's shops like this. You know, we came down here to like peek behind the curtain and, and see how it's all going because it is inspiring. You're you're providing a work environment for tattooers where they do get to still come in and just be a tattooer because everything else they need to be you know y'all have taken care of those things for them and so it's it's very cool yeah it's cool that you guys wanted to come check it out yeah, and it's it's great to see the research you're doing like yeah if anyone ever has like i don't know i think of so many tattooers and just people in any industry and they're like uh, you know, like, I don't like the way this person's doing this or like that, you know, and we, we talked earlier about like, maybe that means you need to like work, work on stuff. Yeah. Um, if we, we all need to be doing this, doing our research, traveling around, seeing like what other people are doing and, and just absorbing and learning and trying to grow. Like that is, that is, you are representing what you should be doing yeah. you know, when you want to grow. Yeah. And I think, equally beneficial is seeing what 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 doesn't work you know because you can yes. you can it goes both ways and we've we talked about this a little bit before on the show with guest spots and you've talked about you know take advice from people who are where you want to be yes. and i think you can take advice from both sides right you can see you can take what some people are doing and you're like okay they're on something there and you can see what some people are doing and you're like i don't think that works at least for me or i don't think it works in general or whatever it is yeah. and i think both are equally important I mean, I've been I've been saying to you, you know, a few times to you guys over the last few days, you know, that Instagram quote that I think about all the time. And it's um, people at the bottom compete and people at the top collaborate. Yeah. And I just really believe that, like, if you have information or if you figured it out and you have your system or whatever, like, there's no reason to hoard it. Yeah. And like, you know, you have your thing and, and you're just not going to tell anyone ever it's your formula. Like. No, because we have the power to like 
literally link together, network together, change the trajectory of the industry, raise tattooing to a level that it has never been raised before. And, and there's power in numbers. Like, yeah. why are we why are we fighting each other? Like, are we afraid of what? Like, this person's going to what? <laughs> well, yeah, and I think it Draw has the been... same roses I drew. Like, yeah. who gives a fuck? <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. And I think it has been that insecurity for so long. And I think I think it's changing a lot where people are starting to realize their strength in numbers. And I think there's when you don't gatekeep information and you and you try to share it and you want everybody to just win together, I think that's what has the real potential to like really elevate the industry to a place where it hasn't been before. Cause there's strength in numbers. It's teamwork. If we can all build each other up and just all take the quality of what we're doing, what our studios are, and just raise it, then that's that's only going to elevate the perception of the industry. There's going to be more money, more clients to go around for everybody. It's like, it can only be a good thing. And like, I keep thinking recently too about like, wouldn't it be amazing if every client was matched with their exact perfect tattooer? Like, I wish there was some sort of like, honor system where like you know if i get an email for a tattoo and it's something i don't really want to do like i'd be like you know who would fucking probably really love this though and take the extra 30 seconds to recommend that person from a yeah. different shop yeah but if everyone did that for each other took an extra second to link clients with the tattooer that would actually do a better job even if that comes down to you turning projects down because you know someone else would do a better job yeah you know hopefully it would come back to you and you would get one you know sure but yeah, yeah. It, it, i don't know i just love when people help each other and and realize that like you know and that means yeah. you're doing something right because yeah. you built yourself you have that confidence in yourself that you're not afraid of something being taken away from you yeah. and i that's a good place for everyone to be absolutely um in the next few months um I have this client. Her name is Amber. She's fucking cool. She's really cool. I tattooed like little castles all around her throat. Sick. Um, and she's a tattooer. And um, when she came to get tattooed, I was looking through her portfolio and I noticed she did a lot of jewelry stuff. Right. Mm. And she's like, she's like, I just started. I'm really inspired by you. Like I, you know, I, I take a lot. I've learned a lot from watching your work and I study it and it's helping me a lot. You know, she came from a street shop with, you know, more traditional old school, like mentors that, you know, aren't her next step in terms of like facilitating, like her style developing in that way. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, when we posted out recently that we were looking for artists, um, she applied and I thought to myself, like, holy shit, this girl is, is she's a great tattooer. And I see so many things she's doing in her jewelry tattoos that I used, that I used to do. And I think with like a couple like long sit downs, I could like help her tweak things, change things. And I think her tattooing is going to change entirely. So we devised this idea basically where she's going to now come to Elysium and we're going to work together. I'm going to like, I'm going to train her in, not as an apprentice. She's already a great tattooer, yeah. but like artistically really tweak her, mm. her technique and her skill set to kind of bring her under my wing and give her these fucking secrets I've been working on for five years because they shouldn't be a secret anymore. I'm not going to tattoo forever. I'm not going to be able to tattoo forever. So why am I hoarding this shit? And so she's going to come be a part of our team. And um, yeah, I, I have so many clients that want to get tattooed by me in this specific jewelry style that I can't, I'm just one person. I can't yeah. do all of them, yeah. you know? And so bringing her in and teaming up together and being like let's do this together all right come on help i need help you know and, and being able to to give your style away and know that you know i figured it out maybe i pioneered it who fucking knows i didn't think i was doing that at the time i was just drawing what i knew you know but um you want to like you know kiss it and like wish it off and hope that it has a good future and that the ball you started rolling turns into be a giant snowball and that yes. but you have to have like trust in other people to allow that to happen you know and you know you pass so much information on with all the seminars and everything you guys are doing and yeah. and it's 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 expanding all of our minds right like it's yes. and yeah. it's and it pushes you to get better people are like well yeah and, and i have trouble too once in a while and it's my own insecurity I'm like, fuck, I tried this, 
I worked so hard to do this. Now everybody is doing it. Um, it just means that now I have a new goal and a new place to go and I have something to do and it's not boring. I need to get better. When everybody else starts getting to a higher level, it should just make you inspired because yeah, it wakes you now up. the bar is has rose again. You got to figure more shit out. How boring would it be? So boring. If you just stayed where you are and it's, everybody else did too. It's just an indicator that it's time for the next evolution yes. and you get to choose what your next version is going to be. You yes. know, you get to choose what direction you go in. You know, you're not, you're not, you haven't hit the ceiling and that's fucking cool. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I also think it's cool though, as a teacher, like if you could potentially teach someone to be better at you, that at something like that's, that's the epitome of being a teacher right there. I feel like that's, that that's, that's being the maybe the difference between a, a great tattoo and being legendary. When I maybe that's it, legendary. I think of legendary as a word being like something that um, is eternal, like yeah. whether it's knowledge yeah. or who you are, like being passed down to others and others, like something just living on. Um, I I think that's that's fucking cool. Well, it's a ripple that you create, and you want it to echo into eternity you know what yeah. i mean like you yeah. want to create a big enough ripple that it, it actually means something yeah. and that's you know um how you actually make an impact you know yeah. it, it's with tattooing i think it's it's the work that you do it's uh, it's changing so much it's changing so much so it's it's hard to say where it'll go but it i think it is up to us and people like us and you know other tattooers to um set the new standard like raise the bar for tattooing it is a fine art it is it's yeah. one of the hardest fine arts in the world and it should be you know one of the most respected yeah and it brings people together it's therapy it's all of these amazing incredible things so i think um it's celebrated but i think um i think it's just going to be a part of a strong part of culture yeah. and, and in the future and yeah, unless totally. the fucking robots take over and like so mid journey designs the tattoo and like robot <laughs> like you have like tattoo bot like imagine if this just had a tattoo needle on it right and you mm -hmm. just like stick your arm under it in your living room mm -hmm. and it just does tattoos for you and you're well so i was actually going to ask i'm sure you've seen like the videos of that new black dot company that's doing that putting like the small tattoos on people okay that's just the first evolution soon it's going to be like portraits and crazy shit yeah it's going to be was, like a printer yeah i was going to ask how you feel about that lame <laughs> <laughs> it's fucking lame it's lame because it's not art anymore you're just you're just wearing a bodysuit yeah it's boutique and forever 21 yeah it's boutique and and i can't wait for like i can't wait to find out what the new it's they're gonna be like selling tattoo designs like wallpapers you know like screensavers i can't wait for you to go through like the ai catalog and people like choose the same one and you show up to a bar and it's like a full leg sleeve that's exactly the same because it was just yeah. printed on perfectly yeah. like yeah. it takes the fucking love out of it it takes the soul out of it and i really think that tattooing is a really strong energetic exchange of emotion between client and tattooer and it's trust and it's human connection and those are the yes. things that we're gonna fucking lose really soon if we don't like yeah you know well i i, I feel like there will always be clients that they they want that um i the technology is there not there yet so i can't like say for certain but i know just being a collector being tattooed by the people i have been like i would one million times rather be tattooed by a person than stick my arm in a machine and like have even even a perfect tattoo you know like i i want that i love to that humanize that it. human connection but it's not even what the tattoo looks like it's Every single time you look down at your tattoos and you look at the work that's on your body, you as the collector, you don't see the art. You see the experience. You Absolutely. remember that day. Absolutely. You remember what you what you talked about. You remember the, the whole experience that someone gave you. It's a memory for you. It, it, it's like a, you know, a storybook of your fucking life. Yeah. And so with with those robot fucking tattoos, your memory is going to be like, what, a doctor's visit, an operation? That's yeah. not a yeah, doesn't sure. leave you changed right. it doesn't yeah. leave you better right and and i think I, I hope that people realize like my clients at least know that um dude sometimes i've had some of the most 
pivotal cornerstone life changing moments with my clients because tattooing brought us together in a world where we probably otherwise would not have met. And we were able to exchange this information in such a vulnerable, intimate way with trust. And it allows you to connect to people on a level so deeply. So sometimes that it, it, it changes you. It does. Yeah. Like so many perceptions I have on uh, reality opinions I, that I no longer have that I thought I had, et cetera, have been changed by conversations I've had with clients at two o'clock in the morning after getting tattooed for, you know, it's, yeah. it's probably the most rewarding, fulfilling part of tattooing. Yeah, for sure. And, and I think just like, just the people that you meet, I met Deanna, not because I was getting tattooed by her, but I was getting tattooed in the same studio that she was at. We met Ian because he was a client of Deanna's like from the very beginning when she was an apprentice. So you never know like who's going to be in your chair. And even as a client, you you never know how that person is going to change your life because it's more than just yeah. the piece. You know? And and for us as tattooers, like, you know, obviously I met Arlo, um, my husband Arlo, through doing events, doing crazy shit together. And we met and and I wouldn't imagine life any other way. But us as tattooers are such a family and such a close, you know, close network that I was just telling you guys this weekend, I'm like, are you guys going to Europe? Where do you want to go? Are you going to Germany? You're going here. I have friends here. I have friends here. You know, you guys have friends here. The tattoo community is is all over the entire world. That's and awesome. everyone supports the, not everyone, but a lot of people support the fuck out of each other. Yeah. And it and it's it's this, I don't know, like tattooers are like this like mycelium network all over the world where we could bounce back and forth between each other's shops and like you know if you want to work in spain this week go work in spain i guarantee you can find a client he's yeah. instantly uh, right like, oh, you show awesome. the fucking here go here and um you know tattoo shops we take each other in we help each other we fucking yeah maddie and i um my manager maddie and i one night got accidentally stuck overnight at some airport and we were freaking so bummed about it because we had the baby with us and all oh. this shit and i got an airdrop on my iPad, I was on the plane on my iPad and I got an airdrop that was a screenshot from someone on the plane and I opened it and the screenshot was like, hey, I hope this isn't totally, totally weird. I'm not trying to freak you out. I just overheard you guys like talking about you don't know what you're going to fucking do and you have the kid. And she was like, I know you because I'm a tattooer. I own a shop here. We have an extra room if you Whoa. wanted to come. She's like, she's she's like my you know um, husband's going to be picking me up she had like an eight-year-old with her my husband's going to be picking us up you guys are welcome to crash i'm not trying to be weird just offering wow. support and i was like how wow. fucking that is lucky so cool are we yeah, as yeah, tattooers yeah. like like oh my god that we recognize each other and like accept each other as family like you know we don't know each other we've never met but but you're there for each other yeah and uh, that is so awesome we're yeah. really fucking lucky yeah you know i wow. feel like one thing the AI stuff might do too is it might even um, make your it it might attract better clients too because you know if you could pick between somebody who just wants a cool tattoo versus someone who like wants a, a Ryan Ashley piece you know unless you start selling your designs to the machine I don't know if you would do that but like they they are wanting like a piece of artwork from you because it's you and that's not replicable you know and right. so it's gonna maybe have some clients fall away that don't really care about that actually. And it's going to leave room for only the people that are like seriously, like want to collect yeah. a human piece of art. It's yeah. the same with people and, and clothing or cars or whatever. It's depends on what you care about for me. Like I particularly don't, I, I get all my shit from fashion Nova. Um, Amanda, she loves designer, one of a kind unique. Like there's people that are going to want designer tattoos and collect artwork people you know, if they want art on their wall they can get it printed out at a hobby lobby or they can go and get an original painting from somebody yeah. there's always going to be someone that really appreciates well especially in the future this might be weird for some people but i think there will be services where like you can have your family members like um with bodysuits and shit like preserved for the yeah. tattoo museum for art exhibitions like i feel like in the future people are going to literally have their artwork yeah 
preserved. They've already started. Like, that's already like a yeah, thing. Yeah, totally. If you're into that, yeah. you know. Yeah. I want to be, well, we'll talk about, we'll talk about death plans. We'll talk about, I was, I was about to tell you what I want to happen to my remains plan? after I die. I want to know. We Go found, the, we, did you guys see those things on the internet that are a fucking, it's a tree with like a sack on the bottom. They basically put your body in the sack and plant the tree and the tree grows and grabs its nutrients and everything from your body. So you literally like That's feed dope. this tree that becomes you after your That's death. Dope. Isn't that fucking cool? Are you going to do that? But instead we're burying our, our loved ones in wooden concrete boxes, restricting them from the fucking earth where they came from, just keeping their soul in a fucking box for eternity. <laughs> I do not believe in cemeteries just throwing that out there i think we should go back to the earth now i think we should go back to the earth we are organic animated doesn't matter if you're religious or spiritual or whatever blah blah any of that shit we are organic we came from the earth we belong to the earth it's yeah i love that yeah and we need more trees planted so if everyone became a fucking tree could it's cool let's do it I'm down. Sorry to offend that anyone that's into too. cemeteries. Yeah, there are some morticians out there that are going to be really bummed. Yeah. <laughs> I know. I want Bo and Sam to be a tree. <laughs> Mortician stock just tanked funeral homes. This. I made my funeral playlist the other day on Spotify. Should I make it public? <laughs> yes. That'd After this podcast. I want to jam and out. if you want to listen to my funeral playlist, I'll put a link in the... <laughs> I would really I've thought I've had this thought for a while I would really love it if people just had like a fucking like party when I died like be sad for like you, if I die before Dude. you do you could be like sad for like 30 seconds and then if I oh. like live my life correctly like I hope that everybody's like dude this guy had an awesome life dude Let's my my friend Steve died a few years ago and he had ALS for two years and it was fucked up fuck als for real like all the t-shirts that say fuck als it really is a motherfucker but he knew he was gonna die for like two years and this motherfucker went out like such a gentleman he planned his own funeral it was a celebration of life celebration of life he planned it um uh, chose a location made his own playlist da, 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 da. he planned his own fucking party oh. and it was like and it was it was sad, of course, but it was he wanted us all of us to come together and just be together and laugh and talk about shit and go through all of the good and, and celebrate all of those amazing things. Because for him and his life, that might have been the last time that, you know, that specific group of people, his group of people would all be together. You yeah. Know? And so just like you said, like he did that. Like he planned That's it and so he gave us a dope, fucking dude. party. And now when I, you know, when, when I think of him, when I think about him, I think like, man, that motherfucker, like his last one was like his last rager was a good one. You know, That's like so he dope. left us with, yeah, I'm really, it was inspiring. Yeah. It was inspiring. Yeah, he totally, went out like a dude. gentleman. Yeah. Like it was very cool. That's so cool. Yeah. Yeah. So let's all make playlists. Funeral oh, playlist. Guys. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I figure out if I start mine now, it'll be really perfected by the time I actually die. You know, mm. it might take a while, but just a running list. Yeah. Let's yeah. all start now. Send us your uh, playlist for your funeral. We're curious too. What do you funeral guys playlist. do? It's intimidating trying to put them in order because it's like, what mood do I want to put people in? Right. Yeah, right. for sure. Yeah. Because I guess for some people, it, it I don't know. Would it just be like stuff that you listen to or like, are you trying to set the mood for your funeral? Because if I put out stuff that I just listen to, Deanna would be like, this party sucks. I'm going to have WAP on no. mine. <laughs> WAP, WAP. Yeah. But that's the, that's the, that's the final song. That's yeah. Like the... No, I think your funeral playlist, you know how in life you go through chapters, like chapters in your life, right? Like during, from this period to this period, life was real weird. This is what you listen to from this period to this period. Mm -hmm. And so for me, it's been like, you know, my favorite songs from when I was 16, my favorite song I replayed in my old apartment over and over, my favorite song that reminds me of my blah, blah, blah. It's like I those like memory songs that yeah. have like scent attached to them that's and dope. like nostalgia, you know? Yes. Yeah, that's One of cool. those songs yeah. where like, you know, like I was in the car, like I, I know exactly yeah. what I was listening to summer after 10th grade when I started driving for the first time in the summer driving around in the daylight i remember like the death cap for cutie songs i was listening <gasps> to was it was it um transatlanticism transatlanticism 
narcissism. Mm. Dude, Arlo and I have been listening to a lot of Death Cab for Cutie recently. My favorite. We saw them recently. It was really? Really? He uh, yeah. Sounds yeah. just like. No, I'm they're still favorite. playing. Yeah, they put on a really he good show. Really? I think it was they like their tenth anniversary show. Tw- yeah. Nope, twentieth anniversary 20th of Transatlanticism yeah. and Don't Give Up oh, by that's Postal so Service. Dope. Yeah, and they and they played both albums like oh in their entirety, is, which like that's I used dude, to I love Postal Service. Love Twenty that. fucking years. No, that was our jam. That was hundred percent our jam. Yeah. 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 That's dope. Well, anyway, I think this uh, this was a really great conversation. Is this conversation. the end of our podcast? Is this, are I we concluding? So. Yeah, unless there's anything else you want to talk about. Yeah, State is there of the anything world. else? No, it would be funny or if Ian. we had like credits come up right now, but it was like blooper credits. Like, thank you for the... <laughs> <da-da-da>. <laughs> <laughs> thank you for folding my clothes this morning, Maddie. Thank you. It's like... <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. Um, check Ryan out on Instagram. You probably already follow her already. I'm shadow banned, so you have to type in every letter. Uh, Instagram doesn't like my offensive nudity of my client photos, so I'm shadow banned now. They don't Girl. like Deanna's nude paintings either, so we constantly have to delete her stuff. Or it's nipple reconstruction tattoo. Yeah, yeah. God, people it's, are so stupid. Yeah. Lame. But yeah, and then follow the podcast on Instagram at Eden.pod. We're on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, YouTube. Give us a like, subscribe, all that good stuff. And yeah, we'll see you next time.